Everybody, welcome to What Culture Gaming. I'm Scott, joined by Josh. Hello. And on another day with another leak, my friend. I know, it's been non stop all week, to it's be honest. It's been 24 hours since we were last sat <laughs> here talking about GTA 6. Um, but the leaks keep coming. Now, this one, uh, initially we thought, ah, it's, you know, it's another Reddit post, not going to be a thing. Um, but then it got picked up by Games Radar, we got this covered. Seems like it's gaining some traction and some steam, and so we we'll might as well talk about it. Take everything with a pinch of salt, as usual, because there's some interesting stuff in it. It is, and it's Spider Man 2, which mm. information is light on the ground for that, at the moment. Honest, yeah. Probably should. It's in the title, everyone knows. <laughs> in the thumbnail probably I don't yeah. know but yeah I mean uh, we, we know that Spider-Man 2 has always been a matter of you know when rather than if it was mm. the most successful PlayStation 4 game of the entire generation mm. so Sony aren't going to make another one but now this might be our first look at how it's you know shaping up and Scott I know we are kind of a bit dubious on the facts Do but there are some good ideas in there I think so Tell me about so that, yeah, there's quite a lot in here. Initial thing, release date 2021 um, seems to line up with what Brian Interhart mentioned on the Kind of Funny podcast when he said that, you know, they very much were experienced after the first game and the second one wouldn't take as long to come back around. Um, same thing with God of War after the studios got used to a game engine and that sort of stuff. You tend to get the sequel a lot faster. Um, weird though that it means that it rules it out as a PS5 launch game or something that's going to come in 2020. Yeah, I suppose that was kind of expected. The leak does say that it's going to be revealed this year. Um, you, mm. you have to suspect that will be alongside the PlayStation 5. Mm. I think, you know, three years from the original game to a sequel makes sense like you said mm -hmm. and I feel like this is the thing that I keep going back to I'm pretty sure they're going to have Horizon Zero Dawn 2 for the PS5 yes. launch lineup that's 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 been my the thing that I've laid my <laughs> hat on for the past few months so uh -huh. I don't think they really need Spider-Man and that mm. would give them something you know to go all hands on deck on mm -hmm coming into the first proper year of the PlayStation yeah, 5. Yeah, I like, think considering how uh, Microsoft are just going down there, everything's fine, just take <laughs> a daisy, don't worry about it. You do, everybody play whatever you want. We don't need exclusives. What's an exclusive? Whereas they never on heard Sony's of side, they <laughs> have to exclusive, never even heard of it. They can just be like, doesn't matter, we've got Spider-Man, Horizon, Uncharted, whatever. Um, so yeah, release date 2021. Apparently in terms of the game world, they're adding Queens and Brooklyn, um, which Big I fun. consulted with our comics team. There's no, it seems like there's no overall iconic arcs taking place just in Queens or Brooklyn. Brooklyn, but it's worth fleshing out the map. Yeah, I mean, you got um, Queens in the Ultimate Spider-Man game, mm. which, as we all know, is one of the best Spider-Man games of all time. It's so we get, we get those extra burrs. And I think it, it helps, you know, expand the game map because mm. I'm sure it said that it was pretty much expanding on what we had already because mm. that version of NYC was already so intricately detailed and interesting to explore. But fans will have explored that to death by oh, the time yeah, the sequel yeah. comes around. So we need, we need. It's it's always that sort of catch twenty two when it comes to creating Spider-Man games mm. because Spidey. Is is so you know inherently tied to that city but if you just keep plonking him in that city it becomes kind of tired and we've mm -hmm. all done that before so you need to add new areas in my opinion mm -hmm. that are like fit and that works yeah yeah there's, uh, there's a bunch of i'll get to like what they've done with the crimes and stuff in a bit but in terms of uh, new villains um, there's a, there's a load of stuff for the villains uh, venom green goblin carnage mysterio lizard cardiac and a few more now i've not heard of cardiac no neither have i no and we're going to delve into uh, spoilers because hopefully at this point you've played the first spider-man um so you get a second to think Think about that whether you want to leave let's go with that yeah. uh venom was at the end of uh, the first spider-man game very much in a big old tank seems like it's how well it is it's harry osborne yeah and uh, being turned into the next venom which means that eddie brock doesn't seem to be a thing but he's also listed as a character that's that's going to be in this as well but let's talk about villains for now well, Venom's apparently going to be in venom it. i think that's always he was always going to be the main big bad of the next game he was so. teased at the end of spider-man one like you said even in the run-up to the release of the first game all the developers were saying there is a reason we haven't included the black spider-man out Fit, mm. and that's because it has you know a major place in the story so mm -hmm. i think it's that was always a stepping stone for that um the other villains i don't know what they're going to do with them we've mm. seen about how you can sort of over egg the pudding as it were with too many bad guys <laughs> and for me one of the most exciting parts of the original game was how much it sh uh, shined a light on mr negative i was going to say mr x <laughs> we've been too, too much Octopus. resident evil um, yeah too much resident evil news uh, mr negative because that yeah. was a character i didn't really know much about i'm not gonna lie i even in well, well Scott, he was only one of the main, you know, villains I, I, in there. The thing is, the, 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 one of the things that I love the most about the Spider-Man game is what they did with Doc Ock. Because I, even though we always know that he's a, like, Otto Octavius is going to become Doc Ock, I thought the script was so immaculately done and the chemistry uh, between Peter Parker and Otto, um, I genuinely didn't want him to become uh, Doc Ock, and I really wanted to save him from himself. Um, and I think that's one of the things that, you know, like uh, one of the only criticisms against that game was that people were going, well, we knew how it was going to go. And right. like, I get that, but like for me, I, I, I thought, I, I believe 
believed. And I think that they can, they can do a lot with a smaller villain. Yeah, I mean, it's sort of like when you get Batman stories about Harvey Dent, who will mm. eventually turn into Two-Face, but it's not necessarily about where that, um, you know, where the destination is in that story. It's how that story is delivered. And I yeah. think with the same way with Doc Ock, you, you kind of had a feeling or you more or less knew that he was going to turn into a villain by the end. But mm. it, was, it was so well told and it was so compelling that it didn't really matter that it was predictable or whatever. And I think that's the biggest strength of Insomniac Spider-Man games mm. is that it takes these characters and these situations that we all know and love and have read about and have watched and have played in other video games, yet they put <laughs> their own distinctly Insomniac games spin on them. Yeah, the yeah. things they do with the lore and the story and the characters for me is fascinating. Mm. I didn't know I wanted a more grown-up Spider-Man. I didn't know I wanted these characters oh, in this way. One. I don't know if I want, um, you know, uh, Harry Osborn to be Venom, but mm. I trust because of what they did in the first game, mm -hmm. that they can pull it off and make it interesting, compelling, and unique. Mm -hmm. I mean, in regards to that as well, like you mentioned Harry Osborn, obviously uh, Green Goblin's Norman Osborn. They show yeah. him in like a green light at the end of the first uh, first uh, game. So it seems like he's, I mean, you know, he's eventually going to become Goblin. But um, something like Carnage, just to quickly touch on that, how the hell can they do Carnage if the origin of Venom isn't based on the symbiote from space? I don't know, Crazy Scott. science? Because in Ultimate Spider-Man, it was slightly different as well. Mm -hmm. It was a man-made sort of, you know, agent like it is in um, the, the game, presumably. Okay. So there are ways to do it, and I think uh, at some point, if you're doing a Venom game or you're doing a symbiote game, you've got to have Carnage as well. There's oh, no yeah, point yeah, saving yeah. him for a sequel. No, no, I'm a big fan of Mr. Cletus Cassidy. Um, have you heard of Cardiac? No, no I, I'm going to lose all nerd credentials here, <laughs> but I don't know who that I'm is. I'm putting out there that he's a, a lower tier villain, and I'll hopefully get ripped apart in the comments, because <laughs> Cardiac is so obvious. Um, but anyway, uh, alongside the uh, sort of individual villains is the fact that Oscorp plays a major role, which obviously ties into the Green Goblin stuff. Um, and the leak mentioned cloning is being part of the main story. Yes. Um, now, I know that cloning is a thing in Spider-Man Mythos, but I've not read any of those comics. Well, What's the deal? Well, obviously, the Yo. clone saga is one of the most infamous Spider-Man storylines of all time, and it's it went down as this kind of bloated disaster because it introduced <laughs> a lot of different, you know... It was essentially, it, it, for a time, it made it so that Peter Parker was a clone the whole time, and Ben Riley, uh. who was a clone of Peter Parker, was the real Peter Parker. It was confusing, it was a mess, but Ben Riley's awesome, the Scarlet Spider it was a cool is costume. awesome. It was a really cool costume. Yeah. But what interesting is that writers have taken that um, you know infamous storyline and actually recontextualized it and retold it in really interesting ways mm. over the past few years. I was reading Spider-Man Life Story over Christmas and that tackles the clone saga in a really kind of compelling heartbreaking way. Okay. So there are ways to do it and I think it would be fascinating to see it in a game because then it opens again the doors to more Spider-Man. We know that Miles yeah. is going to have an expanded role just judging off the DLC and the end of the original Spider-Man mm -hmm. and it allows for different you know characters embodying different versions of Spider-Man to mm. enter the story and give, you know, Peter some interesting, unique drama, especially if we're going to go down this kind of medical science route, because mm. that's how I presume they're going to handle Venom. You know, Harry Osborn has this yeah. disease, he's in this tank, maybe cloning comes into that in some way. I don't know, it which could be connected. is a bit more like how Sony attacked on their version of the movie Spidey yes. stuff, which was the original plans for the amazing Spider-Man movies, that it was all going to be different versions of science experiments yes. that ended up in the game, the plans for the movies ended up in the game. Um, it, I, for me, that's an easy way to do it. I'd mm -hmm. rather they all had varying different origins, but whatever. I'm going to say something right now. I Go don't on. even know if it's right, because it's been a long time since I've actually read Ultimate Spider-Man, but I'm pretty sure in those stories yes. that the symbiote, and I'm pretty sure it's Carnage as well, mm. has a has a role in cloning Gwen Stacy. I'm pretty Ooh. sure that happens, so those stories could be linked more than I know. I might have gotten that entirely wrong. It's been a long time <laughs> since I've read those books, but I'm pretty sure I've got It could be point. true. My thing with the cloning is that I, I just wonder about bringing something as seemingly ridiculous as that in the second game when the first one was so grounded. But, you know, you've got a whole bunch of different villains to play with and Oscorp and everything else, so there's potential for it. And um, The next thing down is Miles Morales, like you mentioned, and he's going to have a bigger role in the game. We always knew that from the end of the way that the DLC in the game ends. Um, but the leak also says that the focus is very much still Peter Parker, that they're mm. bringing uh, Miles in, and they're going to do a whole bunch of different training things and sort of building him up to be Spider-Man, which again was in the DLC. Um, but, like, the, you know, we're going to get to play as him. They mentioned that his combat style is different, his abilities are different. Um, if you don't know about Miles Morales, he has like electric webs, he can turn himself invisible. Go watch uh, Into the Spider-Verse, it's literally the best thing on the planet kind of um, to get a feeling for, uh, yeah, Miles Morales. But I like the idea that they can sort of vary the combat in terms of skill trees and stuff by just letting you play as Miles Morales. Yeah, again, it's it's that sort of, you know, the, the, the not, not the problem with superhero sequels, mm. but you've got to make a, a new game that retains the abilities and, you know, the special gadgets that define the first title mm. while still finding ways to make it fresh and having another playable character with their own unique set of abilities 
abilities and their own unique play style mm -hmm. does help that a lot. And plus, Miles Morales is just really, really good. He's just great. Again, End of the spider Verse, I adore it. Um, another thing is uh, a whole bunch of NPCs, uh, sorry, side characters that are coming in. Uh, this is where it gets kind of strange because some of these have been mentioned in backpacks and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, around the first game, you could get mention of different characters already existing in the lore, um, but apparently they're going to get more of a focus. Um, so in terms of side characters, Flash Thompson, Harry Osborn, Ben Urich, uh, Aaron Davis, who I can't think of Aaron Davis is, um, Eddie Brock and more. Now, Eddie Brock, obviously the original Venom. Yes. So if he's if Harry Osborn's going to be Venom, what the hell does Eddie even do other than just be a competitive force against Parker? Yeah, and Whatever his new job is. Um, also, the um, Flash Thompson gets sort of like name dropped in the original game. Um, but, you know, for the most part, Flash is a bully during the high school years, which, mm -hmm. like, you know, Parker's clearly moved on from in this. So I don't know what you do with Flash. Well, later on in, like, the Spider-Man comics and stuff, when they start growing up, mm -hmm. uh, Flash essentially becomes, like, Peter Parker's best friend, like okay. he's his best man at his wedding and stuff like that. So I think they, I think that's an I've interesting. Not much. <laughs> it's an interesting way to involve the character, I think, because <coughs> I like that this version of Peter Parker is older, he's wiser, and they can look back on you know more identifiable parts of his mythos, mm. like his you know feud with Flash originally, and be like, hey, look how far we've come. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Look how far we've come. Look, look at all this history, this implied history that people already know, and then we can tell this new story with these characters. That'd be and cool. of course, Flash Thompson also becomes. Again, I might be getting this wrong, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. The Venom at some point as well. So what? that okay. could blend in. My that. reference point for the vast majority of Spider-Man is the old animated series, which right. still Flash was still like a big old brute for the vast See, I'm, I'm giving it the big in here, and I'm, I'm, I might have gotten everything wrong. Giving it the Spidey big. Giving it the Spidey big. Busting out the webs. Aaron um, Davis is the Prowler as well, I think. He's Lewis? Miles Morales' oh, so he is. uncle. I, kind of, I knew the word, recognized the word Davis, and mm. I was like, mm, who the hell's that guy? Yeah, Prowler, again, is in Enter the Spider-Verse, if you want to see him. Um, so in terms of gameplay, um, apparently they're working on a Diablo-style dungeon mechanic, but that seems to be just the way that the guy's describing it in terms of getting to the heart of uh, varying the crimes up. They want to make it so that each crime that you approach has different methods that you complete it. Um, because again, if there were sort of any criticisms criticisms towards the original game, um, it was the repetition of the crimes. Um, so in this, it, the example given is a bank robbery. And if, if that was happening, um, then the mission itself might spawn differently where it can, or it can randomly be a stealth mission or an attack mission. Enemies can be placed in different places. Placed in different places? Enemies can be placed in different places. Um, and it's up to you how to take them out. But the thing that they seem to be getting to the core of is not giving you the exact mission twice, yeah, which was the yeah. one thing that stood out the first time. I don't want to have to do that mission where I jump when I can, sort of smash it up and then catch it catch ever it again the in way. a Spider-Man game. Ugh. Ever, ever again. But yeah, <laughs> it's always been, again, a, a problem with superhero games of mm -hmm. how to do those you know, crimes, those petty crimes that superheroes are obviously known for solving, mm -hmm. but keep them dynamic and keep them interesting. And that sounds cool. Even just people you know, being place differently like we said enemies being in different locations different types of mission it might be enough to keep us invested do you know what they need mate? maybe do you know what they need? they need the hot they need balloons no, they don't. They no, really they don't. Do. Did you not like the balloons? My balloon? No, I you didn't can like put the balloons. In the game, I don't know if anyone else ever did this, but if you, you go to the game, you put the slow motion on. Do you have that focus mode? I don't know, but yeah. Put it in slow motion and then do the balloon mission. Right. And the little child's like, my balloon! balloon! And it's the best thing ever. Yeah, but you know what's not the best thing ever? When you're climbing up, you know, no, no, you're not even climbing up a building. <laughs> you're running up a building and then you try to jump off at the perfect angle and you just miss. And you just miss. <laughs> and you web back and you miss. try to get back and you're I running didn't. up again. You just, you just miss again. And that child is going, my! My balloon! How do you and, miss? Because it's 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 a PlayStation 2 controller <laughs> stuff. It's you really finicky. It's saving, finicky. Saving the day. It's plastic. It's Getting a toy. all the balloons. Maybe next time. The Maybe best, they bring... The best part of the balloon was when Venom ate the balloon boy in Ultimate <laughs> Spider-Man. That's the that best That was like a sort of meta commentary on, yeah. like, let's just eat, let's just get rid of this for all time. Um, the only final point is just to reiterate the fact that the Insomniac are doing their version of Spider-Man and that they'll take liberties with characters and character parts. Um, but we pretty much assumed that anyway, based on how much stuff was uh, changed up in the original. Um, overall, as a summary, what do you think of these um, things? It would be nice. It seems like a natural continuation. Mm. I, I hope they have something, you know, surprising up their sleeve. This is essentially... Spider-Man 1, more of the same, expanded, mm -hmm. which I guess would be fine. I hope they have something, some kind of killer app is all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna love it either way. I love Spider-Man, yeah. I love the first game, I love Insomniac games. Give me more. I kind of, I just want more. I want them to do a little bit more with the combat. I thought that mm. as much as it was like, you know, the, the core of it was the Batman combat, you were still sort of looking for counter prompts and doing stuff like that. Um, I want them to sort of vary those things up. I don't know how necessarily. I really liked in Web of Shadows how you could sort of chain the aerial moves together. Yeah. And um, even that got repaired if you were doing the same animation, but at least it was a way to sort of introduce a different methodology, a different way to get through groups of enemies. Um, and I would like them to do something like that. So I'm kind of curious what they do. And also bring back the thing from the Spider Man 2 game where you do the catapult to both sides of a building yes. and you go back and you fling yourself across. I would put that in. Even though obviously this game world's much bigger, I want to catapult <laughs> myself off the top of the Daily Bugle all the way over Central Park. Yeah. That was the only good thing about the Spider-Man 3 game. 
I didn't. I don't even play it. It I was the only good too. thing about the Spider-Man Three game. It was, yeah, if they were gonna bring that back, balloons and catapults, and then I'm pretty much done. That's I, all. I, I, I loathe you. All I, all I need. And let us know what you think down in the comments below. Obviously, do you believe it or what you want to see? And are you excited for the next game in the series? For now, though, I've been Scott from WhatCulture.com. I've been Josh from WhatCulture.com. I'll catch you next time. Bye. Bye.